tonight. We've got uh, Joe Garino who is presenting SEO and social media marketing for open source. And we get uh, Joe come back here every year or so. And Joe, go ahead. Thanks so much. So my whole point today is to open up a dialogue, open up a discussion about using social media in a different way. Because I think in our community, we have a lot of challenges. And we'll talk a little bit about some of those challenges and some of the ways that we can use SEO, just sort of web optimization in general, SEM is a real term which we'll get to, and you'll understand that's how we're done with this, and social media marketing to do that. So sometimes I feel like our community has a huge opportunity it's not exploring. Right? I see incredible software, I see individuals who have endless talent and capacity, and then I see the media, the traditional media, I'm not talking about the open source media, right? I'm not talking about the free software media that actually does cover what we do, but traditional media feeding FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Right? Completely mixed messages or actually technically wrong messages about who we are and what we're about and about the great technology we create. And this is problematic, right? So when I see this, I sort of chuckle to myself. And I don't know, maybe some of you guys saw one piece of foot today. Did anyone hear anything about what Oracle said in a study today? I thought I saw yesterday. So. OK, what, what did it say? Yeah. Uh, you shouldn't use open source for any military yeah. <laughs> use. OK, yeah. Okay. It's lousy quality. Oh, yeah, sure it is. From a, is, aren't they an open source company? <laughs> I forget. I don't know. But anyways. It may solve your problems, but it doesn't so that, that means you online. can't use Exactly, yes. Shouldn't use their MySQL. Shouldn't <laughs> use their Solaris, their Berkeley, uh, yeah, their right. Java. Yeah. This is the wisdom of the crowd. Use closed source that you can't check to see mm. if the enemy has messed with it. <coughs> <coughs> yes. Exactly. So it's very interesting to see the traditional media will follow sort of without questioning what it's given generally. It, and that applies across the board. They're, they have stopped fact checking. Unless it says factcheck.org, there's no fact checking going on. It's just he said, or she said. If somebody doesn't give them a counterpoint, it goes unchallenged, even if it's like stupid. Exactly, which is really problematic. Where, okay, I saw it on Slash. Where in the yeah, major? That's where I saw it. Is that is this uh, is this even made it into mainstream media in any way whatsoever? No, it won't. Right, it's because it's it, and again, it's it's one of the reasons why I say we sort of have to take the reins and oh great. Thanks for doing that. All right. So part of that is the world is changing. Part and this is something I want to talk about just in general, right? If we had had this discussion 10, 15 years ago when we talked about a market that was morphing into one where most sales, the vast majority of sales, were going to smartphones and tablets, would you have thought me insane for saying that? That's now. It's a bit odd, isn't it? Right? And it has challenges for our community. Would you ever think this? Would you ever think that? The operating systems we use that we thought were going to be so dominant forever that that picture would change so drastically? It has, right? Do we ever think that we would be living in a world where we had new challenges for the FOSS community? We're living in that world. We have to be vocal about those challenges. We have to be the ones that bring this forward in the world and talk about it. Because if we don't, those challenges won't get any coverage. Right? We're the ones that understand them. We're the ones that come from a community that, that deeply cares about changing them and, and navigating them in a direction that actually would be better for all of us and even better for the computing world, for the world at large. Right? All kinds of positive implications. Right? 
So one bright area we do have is the allegiance with some traditional media that does wonderful things for us to help us in so many different ways to get the word out, right? But we have another way to do that. And some of the things we want to start really talking about consistently are all of these capacities, all these wonderful attributes of free software and of open source. Right? If we bring this out and, and as a grassroots effort talk more to these realities, then we'll see even more traction in our community. Right? Because traditional media can only, especially since it's so small, right, for the open source world, we can, in our own way, advocate. We can go forward and make positive change in that world. Right? So we have to be the ones that deliver that message. Right? Which brings me to our core objectives today. Our core objectives today are to talk about search engine optimization, which is really a subset of search engine marketing, that right? we'll talk about in defined. And then we're going to talk about how we use social media marketing, right? And how it might help us to amplify our message with literally almost no budget. Right? We don't have to go to a multinational or be a multinational and have tens of millions of dollars to get this message out there. We have to just consistently do it, right? So I'll cover some of the best practices, some of the tools, and my overarching goal is to help empower you to get that message out there, whatever that message is for you, right? That's the wonderful thing about this community. We all have all kinds of different values, all kinds of different projects that we're working on and experiences and, and things we want to promote within our community. So any of us doing something positive to bring these things forward is going to have a real deep social impact that's amazing. So a little bit about search engine optimization, right? Search engine marketing, right? Essentially, back in the day, and I've actually still heard from some people, the same kind of fud you hear about open source, right? Has anyone heard ridiculous things like open source is not secure? I, I heard from a new, but, I, but you hear the most ridiculous things in the world from people. If they're not involved in that space and they have no, no direct involvement or understanding, they hear fud from somewhere. Maybe they were at the Apple store and a genius told them. I don't know where they got it. But they got it, and then they say it out loud as if it's fact. Same goes for SEO, right? There's, there was a misunderstanding for many years now that the black hat tactics that some bad actors in that community <coughs> used and soiled the name of the people doing the right thing in search engine optimization made people misunderstand the value, the true value of what it can yield, okay? So what I'm talking about here is not black hat techniques, it's not cheesy stuff, it's not going to a, a, you know, the underground and paying a cyber criminal to get you 100 million links that come from all kinds of unrelated websites. I'm talking about real useful techniques that will help you and your efforts be found, right? How many of you, how many of you are actually involved with developing on a level, on any level in your Okay, awesome. <coughs> and how many of you also would consider yourself advocates across the board? All right, so this relates to all of you, no matter what you're doing, whether it's blogging, whether it's you know, working on the website of the project, whether it's posting stuff through social media. For all of you, this will add something powerful to deliver your message about that project on which you work. So search engine marketing, again, it's the overarching term, right? They don't, people don't use it all the time because they, it's just sort of like our world filled with jargon, where marketing is much the same. And so it's really just talking, it's adding in pay-per-click into that picture. And we'll talk a little bit more about pay-per-click in a second. But basically, it's doing all the right things to increase your visibility, essentially. The other term you might hear for what we'll talk about in general, and I'll talk about all the uh, also known as terms relating to this field in a second. But you might hear inbound marketing. Have you guys heard that term? 
before? Alright, so the thing that I want to impress upon you is that it's not a one-time activity, it's an ongoing process, right? It's like marketing a product, right? You don't just sort of put one advertisement out there and then magically make it rich, although that would be incredible. If someone has that formula, please tell me what it is. So I'd love to stop working by Friday. That would be awesome. Right? But you've got to just think, this is a process. You've got to have a plan. You've got to work the plan. You've got to have goals. And you have to be consistent if you want some return from that type of investment. All right, so these are the also known as terms you might see that are basically the exact same thing, okay? So I'm not going to use any of the ones except internet marketing, but if you do see them, you'll know people are really discussing the same subject. All right. Pay-per-click. Now, you all, what do you guys use for search? I'm sure everybody used Bing, right? <laughs> right? You did the Bing challenge and then you got converted. And you Only when Yahoo's because the results were so good that you couldn't find your way out of Bing. I want to speak to Windows laptops for new users. I always have to search engine to Google. Nice, exactly. So you all answered my question with, with a laugh, which is the best way to answer any question. Right? So the truth is, Google Except is, will you marry me? what's that? Except will you marry me? Exactly, yes, exactly. And this major, this is a major space for Google, right? It's a huge part of their revenue, right? Is Google AdWords. <coughs> it's this whole marketplace they have where you can go in and say, I want to bid, I want to have this much budgetary allotment you know, per whatever time you set and pick a particular keyword that you want to bid on and then say, you know, I want to place these ads in these particular places and, and on mobile devices or not mobile devices, you know, very targeted in geographic spaces you know, or in a global sense. You can do all kinds of wonderful things with this, with paid, pay per click, paid search, right? But it is the other end of the spectrum, right? Because you have SEO that's natural or organic, which is results that just happen by virtue of <coughs> doing the right things, right? The right technical things that I'll get to in a minute. And then there's this pay per click option, right? And you all, I'm sure always seen that when you go to Google and you search something right up on the top and on the right, you'll see ads, right? I'm sure you've seen it, right? And so that's really the difference. The first content there on the search engine result page that's, in, that's not got a color background on it, unless you use some kind of ad blocker. Some of you guys use it. Anyone else use an ad blocker? Right, so you don't see any of that stuff. I don't see it in the browsers that I'm using every day, but I see it in the browsers when I want to see what someone else is doing. Right? So there's also Bing ads and Yahoo, many options there. Right? So doing SEO right. These are a bunch of different things that if you do, you'll see an improvement of your position online. You'll see an improvement in page rank. You'll see the opportunity of new people coming and donating to your project, you'll see new incoming links. You <coughs> can help even build your community, right? Get that new developer you need to come in and fill a particular role. Any particular thing you need, right? This can help, right? So having a plan with anything in life is important, right? If you have no plan and no goals, it's rudderless, right? So come up with a plan. What do you want to do? Right? What is the purpose of your efforts right? in optimizing your content? Think of that, write it all down. Then always, 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 always remember this. It's not about cheap tricks to get on page one. <coughs> to search That's not what it's about. What it's about is engaging real people. This is content that should matter to the constituency to which you're communicating. Right? You are communicating to an audience. So you have to communicate to that audience in a way that is helpful and useful for them. And then, from there, you'll build a relationship and a rapport with that audience, and you'll have all kinds of different successes that flower out of that. Right? But the content must, must be high quality, must be relevant. Right? 
and you have to keep that content fresh, right? You can't expect, oh, I created a five-page website, and now I want to be the top-listed pizza store in New England. No, you have a five-page website. It's not, it's not ever going to happen under any circumstance, right? So it's like any of these things. I go and I'll see projects that have, you know, this really two-page site, and they have nothing there that, that explains anything. Not even documentation, right? And you go, what, what happened, right? And I'm not pointing a finger, right? Because it's, it's difficult to do. There's a lot of demands on people working on any one of these projects. But it helps you to have, for example, a blog integrated with your website, right? They should be integrated in together. Awesome. Thank you. Time to. That's a good idea just to disable a screen saver. There's no screen saver. There's no screen saver. Oh, it's here. ACPI might have a presentation mode. Shouldn't be doing this. I don't remember seeing that do that in the past. No, this machine has done this before to me. So I thought it stopped doing it, but it was working just fine. Is there a button like uh, function of five? Yeah, that's what I did. It didn't make any difference. Just decided it wasn't going to be. So you just have to. <coughs> it's got a video signal. I don't know why it's mm -hmm. trying to do a couple of things here. Yeah, I was going to try and switch this thing. Jerry works on that. Let me ask you a question. Yes. What's the most, say, the three most effective things that each of us could do to improve BLU's ranking on the search engines for people seeking information about Linux? Um, the top three things I would do. Um, number one, uh, it's is, is it working? No, it's your machine here. Because it says no video signal. Done. So turning the video off, put off and then back on. How do I do that? How do you turn it on in the first place? You mean shut down? <laughs> usually it's function F5 or something. Yeah, it's like usually that. a function key to No, that's what I did Talk several yeah. times. It didn't make any difference. There we go. Here we go. Alright, so we got to evidently <clears throat> mess with it for five minutes. Um, so we'll talk about some of the things here. You have to pick and choose what you want to do. I mean, it's really, like I said, like one of them's right on the slide, it's like more fresh, relevant content. Right? If there was a lot of, like, for example, we had everyone guest blog, right? We had a person do a guest blog every month. We had lots of, you know, interesting content. We also engaged on social media. But, all the social sharing options available and um, you know maybe move to a, a CMS that lets lets everybody sort of get in there and edit and control content and all those kind of things that want to be able to do. Um, and then add video for example. You know, throw the videos up there and video use all these sites. Really optimize the content for the kind of person we're looking for for to join us in, in our efforts, right? So there's a couple of things, but these are all these things here are things you can do. You can poke into the site. 
You're saying that instead of posting our videos on YouTube, we should post them directly? No, no, to definitely go with YouTube. Okay. YouTube is the place to go. It's, a, it's an incredibly awesome opportunity. It's the video place. To go. It's certainly worth it as a place to go. But well, you can go. link, you can frame, you can promote. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So then when you put your videos up on YouTube, you're still embedding them in the BLU site, right? And then you're still creating a video site map that then you're pushing out to, to Bing and to Google that then it's digesting that site map and saying, oh, there's a video on this, right? And you're, you're getting... Uh, so you're saying to instead of linking to the videos from our website, we should actually embed them? You can embed the videos, yeah. And then mm -hmm. therefore put them into the site map so the site map will actually register that they're actually there. Right, and it will actually improve stuff, kick up your page rank, right? So you want to use proper markup, right? That's that's really all we have to say about that. It helps in so many ways, right? And then the titles of what you actually what you're actually writing about matter, right? If you use the keywords that you know are going to be winning keywords, right? That you know are going to make a difference because people are using the keyword to find that specific subject then you're going to see a bump in page rank, an improvement in page rank because of this, because you're using the very words in the title, right, to describe what someone's looking for, right? It's, it's almost immediate when you start titling content that way. Right? Uh, and you should mind load times, right, because when the site is slower, it's part of Google page rank, right, that it actually will say, oh, this site's really slow, that's no good, right? So if you're on a crappy hosting provider that isn't doing its job. You could, for example, move some of those cloud, those files to the cloud, right? It's another great thing that all these open source CMSs allow you to do through add-ons, through plugins. Actually push those out to a CDN. So those aren't loading from the low quality web server, <laughs> right? Low quality uh, hosting provider you have. They're loading from a really high quality CDN that's gonna have the intelligence to load those files and push them, deliver them right to the client from a place that's close to them, right? It's gonna have that intelligence you need and improve your performance. Another example of proper use of tags are all tags. You wanna describe the images, right? Not everybody can see, right? So you should always put in the all tags. You should always try to make your site accessible for everyone so they can use it, right? So they can, you, you're, it's a win-win for your community, the people that need to be able to access that information or access that piece of software if you're writing a piece of software that has to work on all these devices. Right? The alt tags presumably also help images.google. Yes, exactly. It is. Can I ask something about that? Yes. Specifically, image at a university homepage. There are a couple of attractive students under a tree in the corner. Yeah. Is there any point in having alt tags for that? And what is the alt tag supposed to say? Attractive students? Those are just stock images usually. You could just say horrible stock image of <laughs> students who don't go to this school who are obviously models. <laughs> I don't know. Right? It's, but they usually are that, right? So that you're right. There are cases where it doesn't necessarily matter, but there are plenty where it does. Where in your content you, you have something that directly relates to the content that if the name of the file is image01, which I also don't recommend because then it's hard for you to, you to track if you've, you know, secure FTP'd in there, you're like, what is that? I don't know what that is. If, oh, if okay. somebody's searching for screenshots of the open source project you're managing, yeah. um, if the alt tag is project name screenshot1, or project name screenshot name of menu that's being screenshot, that's good. Uh, then that might be a hot image on the results page on Google search for that menu, particularly if they're an images mode. Mm -hmm. It's just like um, metadata in images also are important. If you stamp the metadata in the images, it actually does have a value as well. And, and Google does take mind of that. Right, so if you put that, you stamp the exif information in there. And what is it called? XMP now? Then it came after exif. What, what does called? Google do with the exif? So it actually reads that metadata, right? And then actually will be able to digest it. Right? Which 
is helpful. So I always recommend, you know, name it right, stamp it with the metadata if you can. You don't have to, but it does help too. Right, and then Google, they're pretty nice. They do a great job telling us what we need to do and how we need to do it correctly in order to work with them, right? So the, the web guide, the guidelines are, all webmaster guidelines are all there. It's very clear, right? You can't go wrong by reading it. There's lots of videos in there if you don't want to sit, sit through reading so much. Then the next thing to do, you should always have site maps for your site. And it's sort of like your, the site map is a, is a list of all the URL, all the content on your site and how frequently it changes. And it's a very, it's a standard that, that has it's the de facto standard for telling the search engines all about the content on your site, right? It's what came after, you guys remember meta tags, right? right? So this is what came after that. We already talked about valid markup and sort of a little bit. Backlinks in, in, are inbound links, right? So if you've got <coughs> a lot of inbound links coming to your site, that is in essence a social endorsement, right? It means people are saying, wow, you guys are awesome. We like the content you have, right? I probably have like 100 links to BLU at this point, right? So you have social endorsement by those, those links. How do you get those links? Well, number one, if you create really good content, people are going to link to that really good content, right? And you can do all kinds of other things to get those links. It's a very long discussion as to how to do that, right? Using social media as well. Social sharing is another way to do that, right? Um, a million ways you can do that. You can actually guest blog post, right? You can work with other people in a reciprocal way to share content and then therefore link to each other, that kind of thing. Again, the content should be related because those incoming links have lesser or no value or even negative value if they're not related at all, right? They should be related and relevant things, right? Another thing to do this right is to put the social widgets to make it <coughs> mindlessly simple for people to share, right? Because they don't want to, I, I teach a ton of classes, right? And I have students come in at all kinds of different levels. And you would not believe people actually do not know how to copy and paste a link. They don't understand how it works. Right? They don't get most of the things that we take for granted. <coughs> and I have to show them. And I'm, I don't know how they've been getting on using the internet without knowing these things. Right? But it's true. It's When you put make it easy, it really helps. And if it helps a FOSS effort, then I'm all for it. So widgets in whatever way you want to bring them into your web effort is a powerful thing. And all these are links, obviously, that you can, the presentation's up online, you can follow the links and, and explore it as well. Keyword research is, is vital, okay? What keyword research is, is you taking the time to plan out what are the particular keywords that I know my constituency, right, or my customer, or my fellow FOSS project member would be using to find me and my project, right? So what you basically should do for keyword research is create a, a first level list, right? I would say start with 15 terms you think are the words people are using to find you. Now, here's the, the crazy thing. Those 15 terms, just because you think those are the terms people are using to find you, they may not be the terms. Because then you have to take those terms, you have to go to these free services, that's one way to do it, right? Well, I'll get to that later, actually. I have a whole bunch of links for keyword research. But you're going to have to go to some either free tools that Google has, that Bing has, that can help you with keyword research. Or paid tools, and we'll talk about those in a second. I have whole slides on those. Another thing you want to do is get a quality domain. I've seen people who have a domain with four dashes in it. Like, no one's going to be able to type that. Right? And especially if they can't see well. 
right? It's just disastrous. Like, in, and ones that are, I've seen domain names that are like 400, it's like ridiculous. Ridiculously long. What are you thinking? Right? It's good if, it's, if the domain is actually a joke. <coughs> and you're just going to put some like opening flash, really lame flash presentation there, like the days of yore. Right? But it's, it's otherwise useless to get huge domain names or domain names with dashes in them or domain names that are easily confused for others unless you want to go buy a whole bunch of the other confused domains because someone else will and then you have a whole problem on your hands. Right? So just pick the keyword. If you're starting from zero right, and you're naming a project, do keyword research and find out what are the terms people are using to describe what you're building. And then name your project exactly that. Get the domain, and you're already in good shape because you have the domain that's tied to the keyword. It's perfect if you can do it. And then another thing to do is Webmasters Tools. <coughs> Google has it, Bing has it. It's a place for you to go in and submit your sitemaps. Right? So if you have, how many of you guys have a content management system of some sort? Okay. Is it, what kind of stuff are you guys using? Joomla. Nice. Yeah. What's Google? the purpose of the sitemap? Does, the the si does, does the sitemap contain any information that Google or the search engine can't find just from crawling the site? But it's a standard. And so then you take that, you, you take that standard file you created that if, if you're using a, using a more advanced CMS or is it something? HTML and PHP. Okay, so Some generated pages from PHP. Okay, so it, you could actually get, there's a whole bunch of tools to create and generate sitemaps. Here we go again. And you generate the sitemap, and then you have to go to these webmasters tools, and you actually have to tell it where your sitemap is. Well, well, what, and then submit what, it. Like I said, it's, it's like a map of your website. I, I know what it is. That's the purpose of it. It allows you to specify some information about the frequency with which exactly. pages change their content. So you can tell Google this page deserves more frequent. Right, so if this I'm not sure that makes much of a difference. Well, if, does, if, if, if they exactly don't the crawl the pages that aren't changing, it lowers the load they're putting on you. And but lets them crawl the ones you want updated uh, every hour because your posting news bulletins uh, get crawled more frequently. Most of our pages never change, but there's one that changes every week. So. And, and so telling them that well, they'll crawl just that one and won't hammer every other possible URL, including the for printing and for editing and for this and for that variance of each page, which they don't need to crawl. Yes. My, my impression, so, though, is that yeah. they're very good at working that out yeah. without you telling them anything. Yeah. I've, I've had websites where the front page changes every hour. And what we observed was the Google spiders, which originally looked at it every day, started looking at it every hour. Mm -hmm. They just learned. Mm -hmm. And if, because things changed, that rate of change dropped off, and it was only changing every day, they rather rapidly worked it out and dropped back to searching every day again. Mm -hmm. So I, they seemed highly responsive to change. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and you can the rate specify that as well in your sitemap, you're telling it in the sitemap file. You're telling them in the sitemap file how frequently that changes. You're also telling them the whole structure. You're saying this is where everything is and this is what, what it is. Right. Here's a whole bunch of videos. Here's a whole bunch but, of but basically, the map, it's, it's hints for the search engine as to yeah, where it right. should be looking for updates. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So it's it's a it's an evolutionary step that's really helpful because it's easy for us to create, and it's easy for easy for us then to go into Webmasters Tools and to tell these engines. Here we go again. Even like 
Monica was not using the machine here. So. No, it's plugged in. It's done this before. It's a chime. I don't know you what it's doing. There. Yep, there's always some technological something. So I'll just keep going. Well, we're waiting for my machine to behave again. Another key element is social engagement. Right? And what that means is you getting out there and posting content, interacting with individuals in the world of social media, right, or blogging, right? Because blogging is actually just another form of social software. Right? So social engagement is a really important thing in terms of SEO. It's also, just if you think about it, it's a really important communication mechanism. Right? It's a way that we communicate those thoughts and ideas out to the world now, almost more so in some cases than email. Right? People sometimes spend more time, and if you look at the stats, we'll show something about the stats in a minute, right? that people will spend more time in the world of social media than they do spending on all their communication mechanisms that they used to. So, come on, stop it. So what do you do, just switch out of here into another mode and then go back to it? Yeah. No video signal detected, so it's not detecting information. Okay, you pull that again. Okay, you can put it back in. There we go. Sorry, I'm just giving you guys breaks. It's because it's just giving you breaks. All right. So social engagement is important. Social media, like I said, and social media marketing important for your web app. Right? So if we tear apart the search engine marketplace, right? The funny thing is, who do you guys think owns it? Pretty obvious. Come on, somebody. Is anybody awake? Oh, yes, it's pretty obvious, right? <clears throat> now there are some others, but if you only paid attention to one, you'll be doing yourself a service, right? But I would also pay attention to Bing, right? Because it's another avenue. Some people are using it. I don't know where they are or who they are, <laughs> but they're using it. Where's Alta Vista? It's, <laughs> it's, it's gone. Right, so page rank, the concept of page rank, right? This concept is just to describe the algorithm, like the equation that is used to rank your site. Right? And it's not a static thing. This has changed consistently over time. And why is it changed? It's changed because the web has changed, the technologies have changed. Black hat hackers have changed their tactics and done really negative things that have got them in positions that are like number one for terms they should never be number one for, right? And this recent update, right, called Penguin, interesting thing, they, they did actually remove a lot of the mugshot websites. Have you guys seen this? Sometimes you put a name in your image search, it will come up with all these mugshots. Hmm. Ridiculously wasteful sites, right, they have legitimately this much value. Right. What's that? Some of the blackmail Exactly. So <laughs> it, it's a good thing that these changes happen and these updates happen to sort of clean up the engine, right? So we don't have polluted sludge in there, right? Which ends up happening. Right? So we can improve our page rank by doing the things that I just talked about, right? The basic truism is that there's one or two things you walk away with and remember for all eternity. It's all about content, right? Fundamentally, this is all about engaging relevant content. It's not about tricks. 
It's not even about technology. It's about content. If you get content right, and people like that content and really want to engage with you because of it, you're all set. Right? You can do many of those other things completely wrong, and people will still flock because of it. Like I said, this is a process. This isn't a one-time thing. Right? This isn't a, well, my page is optimized. This is, you've got to consistently work it, rework it, and then rework it again and rework it again. That's the way it works, right? And you're, when you plan and you're persistent, you will see return from this. You will see positive results. So now we get to the part where I was talking about keyword research, right? There's some tools that you can use that will really help you narrow down that list. So then you know once you, you, like I said, you can go through a first iteration of, of keywords and say, okay, here's 15 that I think are the ones people are using. Then you go put them into the free tools and you check, okay, are people actually using them? Or are they using something completely different? Right? You vet that first list, boil it down, find out the ones that are really working, throw out the junk from that list. Once you've got a working list, you want to take that and marry it to some content. Right? right? There's a reason why you picked those keywords, because they relate to what you do or what you are or what the project is, right? They can't just be unrelated terms, right? That happened very early on in the internet, right? Remember when you used to type in like pizza and some other P word would come up, right? You, it's unbelievable that we have those kind of times, but thankfully we're not there, right? So we have free ways of doing this. You don't have to go and spend a bundle because the rest of these are quite expensive. The paid ones are not cheap, okay? But they have a lot of value because they really can help you. So if you're doing this and you really want to see a boost in your efforts, it's worth spending a little bit of money if you have to do the research, you really want to do the research. But you can do equally well with these free tools right here. And the links are right there for you to explore, okay? These are the paid ones. They're not cheap. Right? And they have all kinds of, like every other SaaS application, that's, there's always little caveats here and there, and little extra charges for this and that. It's always an interesting little thing at the end of the day. But they have really good features and functionality. I think, so, I think Joe, if you use Google Analytics, yes. one of its features is it tells you what terms people used when they came to you from a search engine. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's a nice starting point. Exactly, we're gonna talk about analytics in a little bit too, because it's absolutely vital for you to have some form of analytics set up, right? Whether you do Google Analytics or any one of the, the many open source analytics software out there, you wanna keep an eye on what people are using. You'll see it there, you also see it in Webmaster's tools. We'll also tell you those terms. What I'm saying is you should also, from the get-go, be thinking about what terms you want to be identified by so that you're already positioning yourself to be in the right place beforehand. Yeah, yeah. Right. just to, to emphasize yeah. that, I think right. something else we found is, having got your keywords, yes. use them in the text of your page mm -hmm. as often as you appropriately can. Yeah, just keep repeating stop. them, because Google cares <coughs> about repetition and it cares about accuracy. Exactly. So if your title says uh, open source software for network <coughs> analysis and your text talks about pizza, exactly. they mark you down, I think. Of course they do. Right. right. It's, That's confusing it's, site. There's there's there was there used to be a notion of keyword density, right? How many times the keyword actually repeats itself in the text? I think what's more important is that they see that the content is actually relevant, right? It's not keyword stuffing, and you all know what keyword stuffing is. It's just something like you said, I have the best pizza shop in Massachusetts. The pizza here is really incredible. You should really check out our pizza, because everyone in Boston says it's the best pizza. Everyone in Boston, Massachusetts gives us the best review for pizza. Obviously, that's junk content. It's going to pick up on it right away, and kick you right up, right? So it's exactly what you're saying. It's, it, it's using those keywords and, 
and writing about those keywords and copy that people want to read. It's not about making a machine <coughs> happy and improving your page rank because at the end of the day, you want the human to come and connect with you, right? So focus on getting the content right from that angle. So social media is just a medium for exchange, right? With the internet as a platform, that's really what it is. And a lot of kids growing up today, it's their primary communication mechanism. Ask them, right? I'm not as fond of some of the networks that they may use on a day-to-day -day basis, but they do it every day and they use it and it has value to them, right? But, and it's, it's completely different from what we used to conceive of the world of, of old media marketing, right? Where we had to go to a big television station or a magazine and we had to step up in that way with a lot of capital to get any message out, right? In the world of social media, that's sort of upside down. It's, the economics are completely changed. So you can be a small effort and you can make a, you can have a huge voice, a huge voice, right? That's why this is powerful for us. And fundamentally, it's participatory, right? So we can create content, but people can interact with that content. People can reshare that content. People can comment on that content. And most of the licenses that we share stuff under, they can remix that content. Right? They can do all kinds of wonderful things. Right? And the concept of us generating content and our user base, right, in the case of open source creating content, is a really powerful thing. We want to encourage them in whatever ways we can to do that, because that gives us wonderful opportunity. So this is not, this is mind-numbingly obvious, right, except for maybe some of the, the Asian ones, because unless you're actually living in those places or familiar with them, right? But we just see the relative size of these networks. And if you see, this is a, a curious one because if this were a graph of my time spent, actually it'd be completely reversed. <laughs> I'm not that fond of Facebook for a whole host of reasons. I mean, I'm an EFF member and that's all I need to say. So it's interesting where people are spending their time but noting where they spend their time is important for us, right? We may not necessarily agree with each one of these networks, but then we have to make a decision, right, of how we share in the world of social media. That's a fundamental decision we all make every day, right? You have to start from, from the get-go and say, okay, my goal in social media is to do X. So I share in the world of social media only that, right? And that's my goal, right? We're, all of us as adults, thankfully, we're not in that situation where we're teenagers and we're just rampantly sharing every inappropriate thought or idea, <laughs> right? It's, it, we're, thankfully, we're past that stage, right? And we don't, the allure of these networks isn't that juicy at this point for us in our life. We understand consequences of doing things. So I just encourage you, think about what's your message in the world of social media. What are you trying to portray and communicate <coughs> and always put <coughs> that in your head, all right? So it's important because it amplifies our message. It's patently obvious, right? It's important because it helps us build relationships, right? And at the end of the day, those relationships mean success more than anything else, right? So we're really building rapport and relationships, but just with digital tools, essentially. When we want that next advocate to come on and work on the project, we want to get them involved. We want them to feel connected. And, and usually they may be somewhere completely other, in another part of the world, right? They could be somewhere completely different. We can literally involve them through these tools in ways that are really powerful. In the same way we can involve the actual user of the stuff we create, right? Or anyone, right? So we build our brand as well. Anytime we communicate, we communicate our brand. We do this ourselves when we use social media. Right? We portray an image of ourselves, right? We make decisions about what we, we plan to portray and how we plan to communicate it. Right? Another really powerful and important thing about social media is that it allows us to see trends. Look at Twitter, for example. You will see trends, right? The wonderful 
intelligent things they're doing over at Twitter of embracing conventional media, television and entertainment, and coming up with ways to use Twitter to engage that viewership, right? Or that, that group of consumers to purchase and to become envoys for their brand, right? And they magically do it for them, free advertising for them. <laughs> Another thing, another way this is really important is that you're going to get analytics, right? You're going to get some understanding of what people are doing, you know, generally where they're coming from, how much time they're spending engaging in particular content, or whether they leave right away and they go to a particular page, right? You're going to get actual feedback. You will actually get comments. People will say, that feature is awful. Please remove that feature at once. Well, they will say, that's a great idea, or here's a new idea. Maybe we can all talk about this new idea, right, and bring it to the fore. And a really powerful piece of this is that when you put that information out there, it's persistent. It's there forever. That's really powerful. You're leaving a trail of breadcrumbs everywhere across the Internet to say, hey, come back and check out this project, which is awesome, and here's why. Every time you put that communication out there, right? So... <clears throat> so why is this important again? SEO is really going to help your page rank in a natural sense. It's going to help you drive traffic to your digital home base, and I'll describe that in a minute, what that concept is. It's, it's my general way of describing your, your place you want people to actually go visit that has your particular message, right? Which is usually your blog or your website. Right? Because that's where you can control things. There won't be pictures of kittens in between your messages or posts about the incredible Subway sub that someone just ate right, that you should go buy now. Right? Or the ridiculous ad strewn about all across the side of the screen that you don't want to see or you don't want that particular individual who is your target to connect with you to be seen. Right? It could be to a competing project or a product or whatever, right? But <coughs> fundamentally, it's important because it means more eyeballs, right? It means more conversions. And conversions are just an action you want taken. So a conversion can be a sale. A conversion can be signing up for your newsletter. A conversion can be following you on Twitter. It can be any action you want them to take that is beneficial to you. So here are some of the things that people have benefited from social media. Right, this is just a couple of ideas. And I think if you look at it, it's actually kind of funny. Because it's an it's a indictment. Again, if you look at a lot of fields, right, there's no pinpoint accuracy of, of everything. But sales is down on the bottom. Isn't that, isn't that funny? That's kind of one that, that should be like up top, because it's the one we're trying to do so constantly, right? It's hilarious, but it's interesting. I'm sure there's reasons for this statistic as to why that is. All of the others indirectly will support. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And you no, I just think it, it's, it's funny to me. Hey, sales is the hardest one to get. Of course it is. Of course it is. Right, and even if, even if it is in that list that way, it's just it's it's still a good thing because you're still engaging people through social media and still selling. So so maybe this is kind of a wishy-washy explanation for that, but I would say you know there are good sales and there are bad sales. There are quality customers and bad customers, and I would posit that marketing getting getting more specific information about your product out there might help find better sales uh, customers exactly. that will be more satisfied. Exactly. So you can target to such a degree, right, exactly what you're saying. You can target, right, and be very specific in the content you create to attract that person who is going to be the right target, the right customer, the right next advocate, or the right next coder to solve the problem you need to solve in your project. <coughs> exactly. That's right on target. Right? <clears throat> Another thing, social, so social media marketing basically is using social media right and it's it's turning <clears throat> outbound or old-school marketing on its head right 
because we have influence and power as a consumer, we have influence and power as a producer, especially in the cases of a, of a small organization, let's say a nonprofit, for example, let's say an open source project, right? We don't have millions of dollars, so we don't have to go to traditional media, we can go and do things ourselves. Why is this powerful? So social media ser serves in so many different ways. It's really, I like to think of it as just social software, right? I like sometimes to use the word SaaS island. Because <laughs> right? they really are. They, they want you to think they are the internet. Right? Once you log in, they have a little search thing up top. I've met people that literally in my classes are like, they, they, they want to go in the search within Facebook and that they're looking to actually search the internet. It's like, there's a blurred line for many people that, that aren't working in the world of technology. You want to see something funny, go type in, www and then face, people actually type in www.facebook.com in the search. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so this is a confusion. AOL trained them well. Exactly. <laughs> it's not a matter of intelligence, it's a matter of taking the time and using using the tools, right? This is true across the board. With anything. So it's the distribution mechanism that this is. That's what social media is. It's our platform for engaging. Right, and we we use this to drive traffic so that we can convert people. Right, and we want to make a home run. Right, and that's the Bostonian for a home run. Right, you can't say the R at all. You can say home run. I thought it was when you slap your head. Yeah, that's enough. Yeah, that's enough. We're, we're only allowed. That's we're allowed to say the R if it isn't spelled. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I, I'm making fun of myself so I can totally. It's like an Italian joke, I can totally get away with that. Right, so your digital home base is what I'm describing as your home page or your blog. That's what it is, okay? So it's the place outside of the world of social media you want to bring people to, right? Because like I said, kittens and ads from competitors, really annoying, but also really distracting, right? Unbelievably distracting environments that aren't helpful for you getting your message. So I think of the world of social media in an organic sense, in a natural search sense, as a place for, for distribution, as a place for propagation of content, all those kinds of things, and engagement, and eventually pulling people back to your home base. Because they're all walled gardens, right? They're like a labyrinth. You go in, it's like you're sucked into nowhere land, right? All of them, they're like the Isle of Facebook. So this is a pet peeve of mine. Yes. Uh, when it comes to the homepage, I've seen an awful lot of open source projects that the homepage is basically in blog format, uh, and there's no about box that tells you what the project is. So you learn about all these wonderful updates to it, but not what it is and what it does, and who to contact to find out more information. That's really true, and and the same can be said for other. Uh, project hosting websites that I will not name. And we enable the agent. We, we, know, look, we know who they are. But the fact is, you're right, the, when web designers who create these themes for open source projects fail to make a usable theme, and when they make blog themes, they epically fail, like all the basic standards that anyone, right, they, it's like sort of if you had an, a, an automotive engineer that put the steering wheel under the car, right? It's, Sorry, it's I have a train to catch. That's all right. Great it's totally fine. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> so, again, it's 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 ridiculous what you see off there in themes. But in every one of these content management systems out there, you can find themes that are actually responsive, usable, non-junky themes. I was going to use another word, but I will try to control my language. So just remember, think of your, your efforts here as leading them to some understanding of the world, in the world of computing at least, actually so, right? So we need to tell a story, right? <clears throat> and here are a few ideas of how we tell that story within different networks, right? And I know these are all the conventional, these are the big networks, right? There's a reason why I'm saying that, because that's where all the regular users 
R that we might want to attract, or even the coders that we want to attract, most of them are on one of, if not all of these, right? So you can look at these at your leisure and come up with different ideas. These are, this is just one idea, right, for each of the networks or something you could do. And they should be obvious to you. So I'm just going to quickly go through it, right? Basically, Facebook, you can share an event. You can engage a group. So you join a group about open source software or Linux, and you start a discussion, right? just like you would on a forum. And you, excuse me, you also post links that come back to your project and say, excuse me, and say directly what you're working on and why it's something cool that they should want to engage with and connect to you, connect to you about, right? Share a blog post with a suggestion that they leave comments. And when they do leave comments, answer those comments. Right? It's engagement. It's not sort of just put a bunch of stuff out there and then leave it. Right? It's put the stuff out there hoping for engagement right? and hoping that they're going to go back to your home base. Right? But it's also engaging them when they do use the software in that little island right, of social media land to engage, right? So features to exploit in Twitter, again, sharing content, using hashtags, ways to engage are really simple. Tweet the things that relate to what you're working on. Share content that relates to it. Even industry, overarching industry trends and discussions, those kinds of things, right? You want to build an actual communication, working communication mechanism that your project uses to interface with its user base. And a lot of people in the open source world are all about Twitter. LinkedIn, the same, same thing. Same thing with Google+, Plus, right? Except you're sharing it with your circle. Everyone has to have a different name for everything. Right? Because hmm. it just wouldn't be, wouldn't be right if they all had simple ways of describing the same thing. Right? It's all about creating content and engaging. YouTube, it's obvious, you're creating videos. Right? But there's still social networking features in YouTube. Right? So it's amazing, right? What you can do with some simple video. And who here thinks blogging is dead? Good. Because you said that you wrong. Right? Because I don't mean how many times they've declared it dead and then the number of bloggers keeps rising and rising and rising and it's not going anywhere, and there are other startups that came in the blogging space where they said it was over and totally useless. It's not, it's, it's actually an evolutionary step in software that I think it was important and still is vital and important. So the big difference between blogging and a lot of these others is that blogging is typically at your domain name. So you have to drive people to it as opposed to, you know, Facebook. Everybody's going to Facebook, everybody's going to Twitter. Everybody's going to YouTube. Here, you have to use possibly use the other methods to drive people to that content. Exactly, and, and, and you, you bring up a good point. You want to drive them to that single home base, right? Generally, you don't want to segment out your blog to another location, right? Because from an SEO perspective, that's not right, right? You want to fuse the two together, right? So you should have a CMS that has some integrated blog component in it, and also lets you build a website, right? Oh, those those lines are quite blurred, right? A lot of the CMSs yeah. grew out of blogging platforms, <laughs> so and then the only real differentiator there is the bidirectional communication mechanism of the comments, right? That really differentiates the two. So it's kind of like they all kind of have the feature. All the major open source ones rock at doing that. Mm -hmm. right. A CMS is a blogging platform that costs money. <laughs> Well, no, I'm talking about the open ones. <laughs> I'm not talking about the one. You say it's a mistake to use a blogger, but I don't think it's a mistake. It's if you want to do that, you can. I'm just saying it's an SEO mistake. If you want a long-term effort to to fuse everything together. I think it's better to have it all together because, like I was saying, it's got to it's got to be all under one roof, right? Then you've got one site map that right. links to all the stuff, and then you know, um, yeah, so. It's going to be spited properly, it's going to be indexed properly, it's not going to be all over the internet and dispersed. Um, 
So if, if I can expand on that a little, just because I've had to face that battle a couple of times. Um, when you're talking blogging software, you're essentially talking reverse chronological information. And that's what it does. A CMS uh, is allow, it will allow you to more easily integrate static content or, or content that's going to change less frequently uh, and have panels of, of, of content that um, changes in reverse chronological order. Uh, so for instance, it, it, one of the groups I'm, on, I'm also on the board of is Agile New England. Everybody knows that. And I do all the IT work. Uh, and we use Joomla for that. So um, we have you know, a section of our website uh, on the front page that has you know, upcoming meetings and stuff like that in reverse chronological order. But we also have menus for other options. We've got the thing to sign up, and we've got, you know, find us on Twitter, uh, and we've got other things that don't change very often there, too. With a, a, a strictly blogging platform, um, it's harder to do that. Well, not all. What I'm saying is they've all evolved both feature sets, right? The good ones. The not so good ones don't have that. The good ones do have that. Some of them directly in their core feature set now. And then others through an add-on or a plug-in, right? So it's, it, they all have it now to do what I'm talking about. So you don't have to have them separate. Right. Like WordPress does those things excellently. If you've got a proper theme that's not awful, Drupal can do those things excellently. Joomla can do those things excellently. Those are some incredible CMS as well. But all in a row. So again, your goal is with blogging is to start a conversation and to engage. So it's, this is, I think, an important part of if you're building a web effort to blog, right? And also to do video, right? It's an important thing. It's helpful. Simple rules for SEO, SEM, and social media. <clears throat> Just remember your keywords and the importance of keyword research, right? Think creatively and fun about your content, right? Remember that you want to keep it light, right? I can't, unless it's really a somber subject, I guess. In which case, it can still also be humorous, I guess. But you want to keep it light, and you want to have fun, and you want people to engage. So think of those ways to show the personality you have yourself or of your project, right? Because it can't be drab. It can't be something boring. It has to be something people want to read. It has to be something exciting, right? And like I said, this is social media. So you have to be social and respond and connect and actually talk with people when you put stuff out there. Right? You can't throw it out there on the internet and just leave it. Right? This is a really simple formula. You want to know your target, right? You want to engage the target and you want to convert the target. Now, execution of the formula is a little bit more difficult, but it's an important way to think about this, to think of, okay, where is my target? What networks are they on? Where will I engage them? Right? And then how do I bring them back to my home base and convert them? Part of a larger spanning plan. And with your content, this is a really good way of thinking about it. Okay? Have you seen this before? So you want to attract their attention, you want to get their interest, you want to stimulate their desire to take an action. Okay? So your content should pull them through that process. Right? Because no matter what, all of your content is always that in general. Right? Or else it's just sort of a random communication. Hello world. In summation, it's always the content. Never forget that. It is always the content at the top of the hierarchy, no matter what. Now, the good news, I know that, how many of you guys feel like social media burnout sometimes? I'm raising both hands. <laughs> okay, so there are tools available to help you with this problem, right? You don't have to spend all day on these sites to actually have a productive effort in the world of social media. 
So there's great social media management tools that will increase your productivity and help you to stop having to look at those ridiculous kid photos or hear about the wonderful salsa that person just ate or who cares sometimes, right? It gets to be overloaded, right? Especially if you have it on your smartphone and it's coming up every two minutes. <coughs> I do not because I need some balance at the end of the day of not having technology, just shutting everything off. So these apps are available pretty much everywhere, right? So in the case of these uh, free software and open source apps I'll show you next, they're desktop focused, right? But the ones thereafter are web-based but work on all kinds of clients, right? So here are some completely open source and some under free software licenses that you can get and do most of these things, but they don't have the advanced features that some of the social media management applications actually have, right? So if you're managing a large project or even a medium-sized product project, and you want to, for example, schedule out a bunch of posts for the next two weeks, so you don't have to go back in and do anything, you can do that with some of the paid tools out there. In these, you can't necessarily do that, right? So those are some great opportunities. TweetDeck is actually a free application, which allows you to do a lot of the management features I'm talking about, including some scheduling, I believe. I haven't used it in a long time. Twitter required them. There used to be another one called Seismic, which the one right below it required. Seismic is now Hootsuite. And those offer you sort of a dashboard to command and control center, if you will, to the world of social media. And it saves you a lot of headache of having to go on to some of these sites which you may not like. TweetDeck is, TweetDeck is now owned by Twitter? No. Well, yes, sorry. I thought, I thought you were talking about Hootsuite. Yes, it is. So, it, But I'm not sure what's going to happen with it. I don't know what the long-term plan is. And I don't know. I haven't used it in a while. I use Hootsuite now. These other ones, again, this is a little bit more money they're going to cost, but they offer you much more in the, word, in the way of advanced features. Right, they'll give you some analytics and some reporting, right, some ways to track how people are engaging. And then this other one, Gremlin, is another paid opportunity there that you can explore at your leisure. And all, this is up online, so you can grab it and actually follow the links and go and explore all this stuff at your leisure and, and see what you like and what you want to deploy and where and whatever way you'd like to do so. So my whole motivation for this is to help our community to do something so that we can get even more power behind it, right? The software we have, the technology we have, the people, are, all of it is incredible, right? And we're responsible as well for evangelizing that, for bringing that to the fore so that people know about it, right? Because if we don't, how will they know? So I hope you'll take these ideas, these thoughts, and take some of these tools and go out there and tell the story of the thoughts. Thanks so much. Thank you, Joe.